We started this thing over 25 years ago, and we've seen guys come and seen guys go. Uh, the principles remain the same. The thing about chiropractic, 1895, by mistake, a bone was moved out of place. That same year, on purpose, that same bone was moved back into place by D.D. Palmer. When that happened and Harvey Lillard had his hearing restored, our journey began. It's been a crazy journey. You know, you heard Tori this morning talking about some of uh, the days when they, they were putting us down. And I remember those days. This, this, you know, when you, you, you're thinking about it, I remember being at Palmer, sitting in the union, having a, a beverage, and uh, talking this thing, philosophy. And this guy, Fred Barge, he said, Doctor, you have to know that you know that you know. And I had no idea, because I didn't know. I, I went to school, this guy, Richie Klinger, was in my fraternity down here at Monmouth College. And we had one of those uh, crazy fraternities, you know, was get through school, drink a lot of beer, and be obnoxious and hope that you get a degree when you, you get out of school. And Richie got out of school, he was putting up fluorescent signs all around the country. Oh man, I'm, I'm making, I can make $20,000 a year doing this. And somehow, some way, he heard about this thing called chiropractic, and he had a degree. He had, a, had a, a degree from Monmouth. He applied for chiropractic school, got in, and I remember seeing him, I said, what are you doing now, Rich? He says, I'm back at school, Jim, and I'm learning about this thing called chiropractic, and I'm gonna be a doctor. And I said, really? And I just graduated, and I became a science teacher at a Freehold Barrel, which is uh, not too far from here, another little town. And he said, you gotta look into this, Dubell. And he gave me this book, a green book, a green book by B.J. Palmer. And all Palmer's books, for those of you that don't know, the books he wrote were green, he had a green cover on them. So I got this book and I'm reading about it. And in the book it said that there's this incredible power in the body. And this, this power allows the body to heal itself. It allows the heart to pump blood. And he gave like how many tons of blood it can pump, like, like a pool filter. It gave you know, how, the, how the kidneys could filter out that blood. It gave how many breaths you could take. And I'm reading the book and I'm scratching my head and I'm going, this, this is interesting stuff. And then he said, all this stuff is con controlled by the nervous system. I said, well, there's nothing new about that. We've known that. I was a science teacher. I knew it. He said, but if there's interference with that nervous system, just a little bit of interference, it can affect the way those lungs work. It can affect the way that heart works. It can affect the way those kidneys work. And he said, if you get rid of that interference, the power of the body, the power that animates the body, expresses itself. And when it expresses itself, you can express health instead of sickness and disease. I started listening to this, reading this stuff, and, and, and I got a tape by this guy, Jim Sigafoos, and like, you know, you mentioned those little cassette tapes that you put in the, uh, uh, into, the, into the car. And I listened to it so many times that the tape wore out. And I, I pulled it out one day, and it, you know, the long string of tape came, and I'm trying to pull it out of the cassette player, and I, I, I was beside myself, didn't know. Then I got a tape by a guy, Reggie Gold. I'm saying, what kind of name is Reggie Gold? You know, I, th I thought it was like, you know, the guy was selling himself, gold, silver, you know, one of those things. It turns out it was a real person, and I saw a picture of him. He had mutton chops down to here, this crazy hair, and he was a wild man. But he was talking about the, the, the Valley of the Dead, and I listened to that, the, the Valley of the Blind, excuse me. And I listened to it over and over and over and over to the point of, 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 of nausea. And, and I, I enjoyed it. There was something about it. And then I got back to this green book. And I was reading, I said, you know what? I don't want to be a teacher anymore. I want to go to chiropractic school and I want to become a chiropractor. So now I got to tell you a little story. My family are a bunch of Polish immigrants. They came over from the old country by boat, got here, my older brother, Steve, he was the main guy in the family. And he's, he's 20 years my senior. So he was the first one born as a sister and then me. I was the baby, the mistake of the family. <laughs> For me, it was a good mistake. <laughs> So my brother Steve, who my, my, my parents said, you gotta go to school, you gotta get through high school. Because my dad made it to the sixth grade, I think my mom might have got out of seventh grade, but that's the way it was back in the, in the 20s. And they wouldn't teach me Polish, you had to speak English, you're in America, you speak English, you go to school, you become somebody. So my brother being the, the first kid, great athlete, great grades, got a scholarship to Rutgers, played football, went there, went to medical school, he became a medical doctor. The first born kid of the Dubell family
became a medical doctor. My parents were so proud, couldn't believe it. Time goes by, here comes the third kid. The one that, you know, maybe shouldn't be here. I don't know, it's one of those nights Pop might have had a little bit too much and you know, well, there we go. And I, I come home and I say, I'm giving up my career as a teacher. You're making $14,000 a year as a teacher. Are you out of your mind? And this is like 1975, 76. I said, no, I want to become a chiropractor. My father says, a chiropractor? He said, what do you do, like work on people's toes, cut their toenails? I said, no, what, what, where'd you get that? He goes, chiropodist, chiropractor, what's that? He thought it was, there was a term of chiropodist where they worked on people's feet and they, they filed down their, their, their toes and, and took the, the, the corns and calluses off their, their feet. He thought I wanted to go work on people's feet. I said, no, Dad, it's this, this profession that works with the spine and it puts it back into place, but better than that, that's the physical part of it. There's a, there's a part of this thing that the power that made the body heals the body. And if, if you allow that power to work, people can heal up from all kinds of different maladies and, and major crazy things can happen and people get excited about it. And I like this thing. And he went, good luck. Don't tell your brother. <laughs> so we're gonna fast forward. I applied to the Palmer College back in, I guess, 1976 and started my career there. Richie Klinger called me up. He says, remember that green book you got? I said, yeah. He says, I need that back, but get one when you're out of Palmer. Get any green book you can. Beg, borrow, steal, get a green book. You gotta read them. So I went to the library and they had a few, which they don't have anymore, they're at my office. And, <laughs> and I start collecting green books. I had one kid in my fraternity. I was in this, this crazy, like, like animal house fraternity at, at Palmer. And this one guy says, yeah, my father's a chiropractor, been a chiropractor for years, and I'm, I'm here, I'm gonna be a chiropractor, I guess, because he sent me here. And he gave me this book to read, this green book by B.J. Palmer. I said, let me see that book. I took the book, and I was reading, it was Bigness of the Fellow Within. I said, you don't want that? He goes, yeah, you can have it, Dubell, I don't care. I got Bigness of the Fellow Within. Volume 18, and I'm reading this thing. And BJ had stuff in there, guys, that blew my mind. It was so incredible. And, and the theory and the way the body worked, and if you made that adjustment, what could happen? And the way he explained it. And I got so excited, I was reading it page after page, and I started coming to the fraternity and talking to the guys in the fraternity about it. And they started getting excited. And Freddie Schofield came, he goes, what's this thing, chiropractic, you know, philosophy stuff? I'm, I'm here to play rugby, and I'm gonna be a doctor, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. I said, Freddie, you gotta get this stuff. You gotta understand it, we gotta go down to DE. We get in my car, we drive 21, to 24 hours from Davenport, Iowa, all the way down to here, Sid Williams. And Sid Williams would get up there and he'd start talking. He'd go, the old boys come down here to sound and they're down there. No one come on here. I'm gonna have ball peanuts and we're gonna eat some of them. I didn't know what he said, but I loved it. <laughs> then I heard Sigafoos. My first time hearing Jim Sigafoos. For those that know, you'll understand. For those that don't know, maybe I can paint a picture of him. Sigafoos walks up there. He's got a headband on with 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 feathers coming out of it like an Indian. And he walks up on the stage and he goes, the power that made the body heals the body. It comes from above, down, inside, out, and it expresses life. And I went, hallelujah, I'm here. <laughs> I got it. I started understanding this thing. And then they brought one great speaker up after another. This guy, Tom Pasersky, walks up on the stage and Tom stands there like this. BJ, you reminded me of this. And he stood there and I'm waiting and he stood there and I'm waiting, and he stood there, and I'm waiting, and everybody's like this. Then all of a sudden, the spirit hits him, and he starts going, if you're a chiropractor, you gotta move the bone off the nerves so that you can free that body up, and the body can express life, and there isn't any one person in the world that you cannot move a bone off, their, off the nerve that they won't heal up. And Tom had this spirit. It hit him, and it hit us, and people were hugging each other and loving each other and being proud that they were chiropractors. Now I'm gonna go a little further. I get back from, from DE and I'm talking to all these different people down at Palmer. They got the stuff back then. BJ knew what he was doing. He gave it to Sid Williams, he gave it to Reggie. They went to Palmer. I was at Palmer, we were sharing it. Fred Barge was talking in my ears. The, the, it started coming and I realized Fred's talking. He said, in one of the volumes, The, no, the Known Man by BJ, he said, this is innate. This is how incredible this stuff is. And you guys think that we know everything. We're so educated. We know, have so many great thoughts in our head. Innate can take a woman in South America. All right, Lou Corletto, South America. You go down there, that woman is uneducated, can't speak English, maybe can speak Spanish or whatever language is down there. And 
She becomes pregnant. 265 to 280 days later, she has a baby. That uneducated, ignorant person that lives in a hut with a dirt floor, does she have to think about, now's the time for that baby to make a spine? Now's the time for it to make a heart? Now's the time for it to make lungs? No, there's, there's something going on here so powerful. This innate intelligence is making that perfect baby with five fingers on each hand, with two eyes in its head exactly where they need to be, in that ignorant person living in the squalor of South America. Now we're going to go fast forward. We're going to go to New York City, up to John Hopkins University, one of the greatest medical places in the world with the most educated people in the world. And here this woman gets pregnant. And 265 to 285 days later, this woman has a baby. Does she have to go to the medical books to say, okay, today we're going to make a little spinal cord, and today, tomorrow we're going to make the vertebra around the spinal cord, and then they're going to take that zygote, and they're going to make a heart and a liver and a kidney? No! There's an innate intelligence in that same woman with all the education that's got the greatest Park Avenue education. The same thing happens in her. That same innate intelligence is working inside her as it is working inside that poor, ignorant person that, that lives in the dirt and the squalor. What am I telling you? All the crap that we, we, they, they shove into us and we think we know, we know nothing. The one thing we do know, that there's a God, there's a power, there's a universal intelligence, there's an innate intelligence, whatever you want to call it. That power is what animates the world. It gives light to the heavens. It gives that spin to the earth. It takes the, the sun and the earth's moving, the sun comes up and then all day just the right amount of light to let the grass grow. And just the right amount of water falls out of the, out of the heavens to, to nourish that, that lawn. And then the sun goes down and it gets a rest period. You know what that power is, guys? That's the power that we release every single time you make a chiropractic adjustment. Yet, th these knuckleheads want to take machines and go mm, on machines and, and give them vitamins and minerals and, and change their diet and all this crap. That stuff is okay, it's fine, but it's not chiropractic. Chiropractic was founded on one thing, moving that bone back into its normal position and letting that power that animates the heavens, let it loose, let it free. I had somebody tell me, I, I've said this story a thousand times, and I'm going to say it again right now because Nate says it's time. One adjustment. We were down in Haiti. We were adjusting. We're moving that bone, moving that bone, moving that bone. And I'm adjusting hundreds of people. And somebody said, you can't possibly help them with one adjustment. You moved that bone one time. You know what, guys? The story, you've all heard it. Little boy's walking down the beach, and there's starfish all the way down the beach. And it's high tide, and the tide goes out, and the starfish are stranded. And he walks down and picks up a starfish, throws it back. Walks up and there's thousands of them. He picks up another one, throws it back. Walks down, picks up another one, throws it back. And this guy's watching. And he says, what is wrong with this kid? He's throwing this, he couldn't possibly make a difference. There's thousands of starfish, thousands. And he goes, young man, you cannot make a difference. There's so many here. And the boy looked and he said, as he picked up another one, threw it back, he goes, to that one, I just made a difference. If you get your hands on one person, move that bone back into its normal position, you can't imagine, even that one time, what that's going to do. How dare you think that you know more than universal intelligence than God himself, what that adjustment is going to do. If that's hindering, hindering their expression of life. I'm wondering if this guy over in North Korea, if somebody went over there and blasted his atlas, if he wouldn't start thinking straight and start taking that money and do something good for mankind instead of making everybody nervous. I'm laying in bed last night and that thunder, I don't know if you heard it. I jumped up out of bed. I said, oh my God, we're being bombed by North Korea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. And I got up and I look and Babs just go, what was that? And I'm laying here in bed all night long. My mind's gone. I couldn't fall back to sleep. Another thunderstorm, another thunderstorm. Finally, I fall asleep. About six o'clock, I hear the room next to me. What the? It's six o'clock in the morning. It's this alarm clock going off on a computer. So it stopped. I said, "Oh, thank you, God! I can go back to sleep." Put that big pillow. Must weigh 15 pounds in this hotel. Put that sucker on my head, and all of a sudden I hear, "Oh, not again!" I got up and I said, "I banged on the door." You son of a bitch! Got real quiet. <laughs> Babs went back to sleep. I went back to sleep for a little while at least. They must think I'm a, I'm a nutcase in the next room, but it was close. If that guy would have, or lady came out, it would have been like this. <laughs> 
To finish the story on, on my brother, my parents were so proud of him, you know, because the first kid in the family became a medical doctor, and uh, I went to chiropractic school. He thought that I was going to emulate him and go to medical school, because I had a science degree, and, uh, you know, I was established. And he said, listen, got a nice practice here. You can come in. And he, I guess he thought I was going to come into his practice. And obviously, I, I didn't. My brother had nine children, okay? Good Polish guy, don't do one thing, come home and make children. Uh, nine kids, of his nine children, not one of them became a medical doctor. But his youngest son, David, became a chiropractor. Now, what does that tell me? That tells me chiropractic works. It tells me chiropractic works every time in every condition. You know, we've said it a thousand times, and I'll say it again because you can't hear it enough. You know, you go to your place of worship, weekly, monthly, whenever. You don't go there because you need to, to learn about God. You go to, to be reminded of where you are and where you need to be. And you come to New Beginnings to do that. And I'm going to remind you of this. Chiropractic works in babies, and it works in geriatric. All right. Chiropractic works in men, it works in women. Chiropractic works in people in South America, North America, Asia, Europe, black skin, white skin, yellow skin, brown skin, red skin, any other skin color you can do, and any language you choose to speak. Chiropractic works, doesn't it? We all know that. You know, I, you know we're preaching to the choir. So don't you think that there's a plan here that if chiropractic works all the time, it works. If it doesn't work, guys, it's never worked. It's like Sid used to take the keys and he'd drop them, and you can't see gravity. But the keys, every time he let go of the keys, they'd fall to the floor, and he was trying to make a point. It works every time. You let go of the keys, and they would drop to the floor. That's gravity, an unseen thing. You can't see a mental impulse. You can't see gravity. You can't see the power of chiropractic when you make that adjustment, but it works every single time. We're doing ourselves, we're doing our profession a disservice by not going out of our way and telling everybody every day what chiropractic is and what we do. We've gotten complacent. We used to have students, oodles of students that would come here and they'd learn. And now I get, oh, well, I had, I had, I had two patients in the clinic. I can't come to New Beginnings, okay? Uh, well, you know, my schedule between studying and, and boards, I can't come. I used to leave Davenport and drive all the way. I remember coming home one night, we're driving back on a Sunday night with four guys, Tom Kelly, Lou Goodmanson, Freddie Schofield and me, driving in my little Mustang down, down the road, and Lou was driving, and the two guys in the back seat were out immediately, and I was in the passenger seat, and it was my car, and I looked over at Lou, we're driving, and he's, he's, you know, doing good. And I close my eyes for a second. I hear, and we're going off to the side of the road. And I grab the steering wheel. Lou was so asleep at the wheel that I'm steering the car. And the good news is he wasn't stepping on the gas anymore. He had fallen asleep. So I steered the car for a little bit. Lou, Lou, wake up. Lou, Lou, dog, got it. Wake up, you son of a. And I said, you want to get in my seat? Yeah. He got into his seat. And I sat down. And that's when I put in that Reggie Gold tape. That was the first time I got that thing. And I drove 21 hours while these knuckleheads slept <laughs> to get back to Palmer. I gave up my time, my effort. I, I, and they're telling me another story I gotta quickly share. Bill, you remember when we did cruising with the oldies, okay? I had a passion, and anybody's got a passion, whatever it is, if it's softball, baseball, karate, running dogs, those Doberman pinchers you got, anything your passion is, get involved with those people. Every one of those people that's involved with the, the thing you like, they're patients. Every one of them. That's like, huh, car blanche. I like ice cream. Everybody that likes ice cream is going to be told about this. Everybody that has a Doberman Pinscher is going to get told, told about chiropractic. So I love old cars. And I worked my ass off. I was adjusting people every single day, and I got one. I saved up, and I bought one. And it, I made a tropical turquoise. I made it a V8 with two four barrels on there, all original. The dual exhaust coming out the back. I drive to the office like this. <laughs> so Bab says to me one day, she says, uh, you know, People coming over looking at the car. And true story, we went into this little town called Red Bank here. 
and the kids wanted ice cream. So we pulled in front of a Hagen dazs and the convertible top was down, and two of the kids were in the back. Stephanie, who's now down at Sherman, and my other son, Palmer. Palmer, name my son Palmer. I'll get to that later. <laughs> They're in the back seat, and they went, ice cream, daddy, ice cream. So I go in there, it's 90 degrees. Baz is pregnant, and I'm, I'm going, oh my God, what the, the whole world's crazy. I got my beautiful car. The kids are screaming for ice cream. I get them ice cream, and they're spilling it all over the car. But people are coming over, they're looking at the car. What a nice car. Oh my God, I, I made my first two kids in the back seat of that car. And I said, well, what a nice thing. They were talking to people, and I got this idea. How can I promote Jim Dubell and chiropractic in the town of Red Bank, which is my town, with this car? I'll do a car show. So I got a couple of my buddies together. I went to the mayor of the town. I said, listen, I'd like to come down here. And he goes, well, Jim, the town's busy on Friday and Saturday night. He says, come on Thursday. There's nobody in town. The town's dead. They must have just locked the door. He goes, just shoot a shotgun down the middle of the street and not hit anybody because there's so few people in town. He says, go ahead. I'll give you permission. So I got permission. I made up. And back then we had, uh, I think, those kind of things that you made copies with, whatever the, the old people know, Xerox. I made all these copies of this thing to cruising with the oldies. And I got my car and I invited 15 of my buddies. I said, anybody else, we, got, we can go downtown, I'll bring some cones, I had two or three, those orange cones, I said, we'll come down there. And I made one sign, and I put it across the highway, a 40 foot sign, I remember I had to, I had to save up money out of my office, and uh, I told Bill Henry I was paying for it, but he paid for half, he doesn't know it, sorry Bill. <laughs> uh, and we put this sign up and it said, cruising with the oldies, sponsored by Health In Hand Chiropractic. 732-747-4646. So it had that, and I put it up. And this happens to be near the hospital, Riverview Hospital. So I made sure the sign was right there. They could see it every day, see chiropractic. So we had this thing. I invited my 15 buddies. And we said, we'll meet down here at 6 o'clock, and we'll show our cars off. So about 5.30, I said, let me get down here and put out those couple cones I had to save a couple spots. And I'm driving down. I see a street rod. I see a, a 32 Ford. I see a 66 Mustang. Where are these freaking people coming from? Where are they going? I said, maybe, I, I, you know. I go downtown, and there's 40 cars. And I pull in. I'm lucky to get a spot, and there's people coming behind me. And the policeman's going like this. He's tr trying to direct traffic, and cars are coming. They, they saw the sign. They heard about it, and all these people are coming, and they're talking about this cruising with the oldies. Now it gets better. We had 1,500 people show up. All talking about, yeah, that chiropractor, that chiropractor, that guy, Dubell, yeah, the chiropractor. I'm walking down the street and I hear a guy going, oh, Dubell, that guy, I heard he's doing this whole thing. He's, got, he's into the cars. And I'm Dubell. So we, do, we then we go back to the town. One restaurant, remember Babs? Had a restaurant, went in to get chicken. The guy goes, don't even come in here. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I sold everything out. Who thought people would come on a Thursday night to Red Bank? I have no food left. I said, it's a good thing. I don't know. I'm going to lock my door. I Seriously, so that is the guy, the local beer place with beer and burgers lined up down the road. And I'm over, I said, who started this thing? The chiropractor? Yeah, that crazy chiropractor. Dude, Bell, I don't know who he is. He's a great guy. He's got that blue Chevy out there. That's good. And I'm standing there doing this. That's good. <laughs> so I go to the town. I get permission to do it again. They go, do it every month. Have a great time. Now I go and I get Miller Lite. Miller Lite says, I'll sponsor it. We'll pay for the banner. Sorry, Bill, you didn't have to pay for that one. It's a good thing. You saved money. We got these big banners, I put them on a couple streets, and oh, health and hand chiropractic. <clears throat> I got a DJ, some guy wants to donate his time. Another guy says, I got a flatbed truck, an old 52 flatbed. He pulls it in, puts the DJ on there. A guy dresses up as Elvis, he's waving to people, and he's talking about cruising with the oldies. I got a guy, another guy shoots flames out of the back of his car. He's driving down, flames are shooting out the back. It's the biggest thing, 30,000 people come into town. I get the microphone, and I'm scared to talk to people, you know that. <laughs> I get the microphone and I go, and we want to thank Dr. Jim Dubell at Health in Hand Chiropractic. Anybody that has a health issue, go see Jim Dubell. And he's the greatest chiropractor in the world. I've, I know him personally. And I'm talking about me on the thing. And the Elvis guy's looking at me going, eh, what the hell? Man? True story, I got 100 new patients out of that every year. 100 new patients, a lot of patients. I didn't get them all the first day. I got a few here. Somebody came in. Hey, my, can my wife come in? Can my friend? My next door neighbor. Hey, you the car guy? I heard you were the crazy car guy. I want to come in. So I guess in ending the story here, I, I, I publicized chiropractic. I had something that I was passionate about besides chiropractic, the old cars. And see, I remember I brought in a carnival. We went down, downtown into Red Bank on the river. We, Babs put on a food festival, Porta Cruzin, a carnival. Bruce Springsteen shows up, he's up the top with an old Chevy, and he wants to go down and play on there, and one, we had an Elvis competition. 
And this one little Elvis guy comes running up to him, and Bruce goes, Jim, I'm going to get on the uh, stage and do a thing. I said, that's great. You know, that'll, that'll put us over the top. And this little guy goes, hey, Bruce, hey, Bruce, 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 can I have your autograph? Oh, please, Bruce, Bruce. I love you so much, Bruce. <laughs> and he looks at me, he goes, Jim, I got to go. And I remember I was devastated, but John Bon Jovi came down. They drove around. They were waving. We had stars. We had bands. We had, I could go on and on and on. Made it into a festival. And it built my practice, built all our practices. And we had fun. The board of New Beginnings would come down. We had a little hospitality tent. We all went down. We had free food and a little taste. And, you know, it was nice. But I sold chiropractic throughout that time. How many of you are going to put up 40-foot banners that say, the name of your office, health and hand chiropractic. How many of you are going to go out of your way to tell people about chiropractic like that? It's fun. You got to enjoy it. You got to be so excited about it that they think you're crazy because they already think you're crazy now when you're telling them what you do. Prove it. Show them that you're a nut. Show them that you're going to do something out of the ordinary. When we had those fire walks with, with Jay Han, we put the, 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 the coals out, we, we lit the fires, and true story that I only confess now, you know, days later, years later, back in 1991, the newspapers came down because 15 people burnt their feet doing a fire walk with Jay Han and Chuck Ribley at New Beginnings. My hand to God, true, true story. Newspapers, crazy chiropractors burn their feet on hot coals. Blah, blah, blah. The, the, the TVs came to my house. We set up, I got Chuck and, and Jay, they did a, a firewalk in my backyard for CBS, NBC, and ABC. It was international news, and they did this firewalk, and here's Ruth Ridley. She goes, ooh, ooh, that's hot, ooh, ooh. This is Ruth on TV. They're showing, and they're sort of talking to Chuck, goes, well, you know, you do the firewalk because you can get over all your fears. You're never really going to get burned, but it gave us good publicity. I got death threats from chiropractors. You set chiropractic back 100 years by doing that firewalk. Other guys, great job, Dubell. Oh my God, people are asking me about that, the crazy chiropractor, do I know you? And I said, yeah, I know you, oh good, come on in. You know, I got new patients, because they, they got an interview with us. It wasn't for years later that I realized I was trying to be thrifty, and when Jay and Chuck told me get the wood, they said get oak or cherry. Well, I cut down some locust trees in my backyard. And locust is this hard wood that doesn't burn, it smolders, and I snuck that in to save a couple bucks, and because of the wood, that's why people burnt their feet. It was like walking over a hot oven. <laughs> and I didn't fess up to Chuck till a couple years ago, and he was pissed, but <laughs> one of those things. So you're learning a little bit about the history. You know what? We're going to bring back that fire walk. I, I just think it's a great idea. We'll get real wood. We'll get oak. And I noticed that a lot of the kids used to come, and, and they enjoyed doing that. In chiropractic, if you don't sell yourself, BJ said you got to sell yourself. BJ got a radio station, and he'd get up there and he'd do these great long talks about chiropractic on the radio station, WOC, Wonders of Chiropractic. Coincidence? I think not. Then he got, because radio was the precursor to television, television came out, and the WOC was still there, he had the airwaves, he got that, and he used to do that. The, the Palmer Enterprises still exists. It's a multi-billion dollar uh, company, corporation, and they still have it out in Des Moines and Davenport, Iowa. Okay, but BJ stepped out of his comfort zone. He 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 marketed himself. He went around. He dressed crazy. He wore crazy suits. He had you know, the cigar and the horn rim glasses, and he always dressed impeccably. And he sold himself. And he sold chiropractic. When are we going to take uh, 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 the message from there? When are we going to grab that, grab hold of it, and start selling ourselves? We've been given a gift with chiropractic. And if you use the gift that God gave us, not only will you benefit, but your patients will benefit. Everyone benefits. But if you throw it away and you say, you know what? I can't work Fridays because I gotta, I gotta go to my bowling league. I, I, I can't go in for that, that poor lady that, that needs to be adjusted. She called on an emergency basis because, well, then it's gonna take away from your lunch. When you start thinking like that about you and about all the crap that you've done and, and it becomes more of this thing where you become selfish and you become afraid to share chiropractic, well, then you're doing yourself and God an injustice. God gave us this, this passion. God gave us this gift. Five fingers on each hand, you can go anywhere in the world and move a bone off a nerve. You find another human being of any type description, you can adjust them. Come on, guys, think about that. 
God made it that easy for us. Yet we want to go and inject our babies with all this toxins and all this crap. And we want to give, give people for arthritis, give them all these drugs and this other nonsense when they get older because they got a little bit of arthritis. Start loving them. Start caring for them. Start doing what you were intended to do. I'm, I'm speaking to the choir. Everyone here at New Beginnings understands that. We've been given this gift. There is a power. And that power comes from above. It comes down and expresses outwardly. That's the power we have in our hands. That's the power you have to take with you. That's the power you take home after this weekend and share. That's the power that you, you have. Each and every one of you, I love you. You're my family. And I always say, welcome home. Welcome home. God bless.